Why six? And what happened to yeah, five? Like everyone, could, five or like even I don't know four or I don't know. It just <laughs> six feels weird. Anyway, Olivia, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated to get started with your your. It, normally, I'd get started with the journey into veganism, but long time listeners would say, uh, "Where's that question?" Well, that, we'll talk about that later. I want to get started with what got you into acting. Well, <laughs> um, so where where do I begin? I'm going to go all the way back to, uh, I'm going to go all the way back to the nativity, which as uh, all of us in the UK know <laughs> is what we do when we're five yep. and acting out the Christmas story. So Mary and Joseph and the birth of baby Jesus. And uh, I was just, I was vying for Mary. <laughs> that was, I had my eye on the prize. <laughs> And what happened, I was an unnamed angel and I honestly came out of school oh. crying my eyes out at the age of like five. So I already knew what I wanted. Um, but yeah, like I actually had to just settle in and buckle up for years and years of intense rejection. Honestly, it was just like, okay, so this is what this is. Um, tried to go for Mary again in year five when we did the nativity again. Hoped to get a role in Greece in year six. And I was just a dancer. Broke my heart. Um, I love the fact the school went, went nativity, nativity, Greece. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Keeping in the theme, you know, of religion, clearly. Um, but yeah, so my heart was already broken a million times by the age of 11, at which point I went to secondary school and um, the heartbreak continued. <laughs> this is such a great start to a podcast. Like, hi, look at my sad life. Um no, but to be fair, it's essential as an actor to know what rejection is and to just, like, carry on. Um, so the same thing happened through secondary <laughs> school, but I did GCSE drama and A-level, which kept me going and um, got the odd part here and there, the odd line in the school, plays and musicals and stuff. Um, and then it got to applying to mm. uni, and uh, my drama teacher was like, oh, so what, um, what drama school are you applying to? And I was like well I'm, I'm not because I was like <laughs> you know yeah I, I mean I think I'm good and everyone thinks I'm good but like you've never given me a role I'm just not I didn't think it was an option for me and also being mixed race I hadn't seen people like me right. on screen so I I was like well it's obviously not a thing but I'll do it for fun so I went to uni in London studied sociology as you do and um was just like doing part-time acting on the weekends like student short mm. films anything I could mm. basically um and that happened when I got a job in market research then social research then worked in a school as a learning support assistant <laughs> oh, and throughout I was just like grafting on the side going to any like money I'd get from work I'd put into acting classes getting headshots um paying for like the acting websites I was trying to get jobs on and yeah, slowly, 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 I built up a CV um, of like just basically mm. short films, um, as many as I could. And then I went to, I fell into another acting class, which they run an agency alongside their, um, their classes. So I went there um, and loved it and did three terms there, like two hours a week in Old Street, um, like yeah, three terms across like nine months or something. And yeah, at the end they do a, they do like sort of an audition. Yeah. Um, as in like just to, they prepare you essentially for the industry and they're like, this is what it's like in a casting room. Um, like, let's see how you handle it. And luckily I've been to, in a million casting rooms, mainly like for like student films, but yeah. still I knew like the tension of going in, having to like perform, get everything right and be off book and everything like that. And then, yes, yeah, so I went into the meeting and um, they signed me and I'm still with that agency. My agent is also called Olivia. Um, and, yeah, it kind of took off from there. Um, I quit my full-time job at... No, I already had. I quit my full-time job at the school to pursue acting full-time. And it took a year a year to get this agent mm. of mine Um and I basically had quit because I booked a job in India um, and I'm, mm. I'm going. So it, the, the shoot ended in Goa, amazingly. And it was a commercial, but we shot for three weeks traveling around wow. India. Um, 
yeah. So when I came back, I was like, what am I doing? Like, I loved my job in, I was in year one. So they were all five and six. It was very cute. But I was like, this is, <laughs> this is, te- this is sucking all my time. And I have no time to be an actor. And I was like, I can't deny it anymore. You know, I had like quarter yeah. life crisis, basically, <laughs> which I know my friends, you know, sort of you analyze your relationships, your work, your everything. Mm. And so I just turned my life upside down. And then a year later, got my agent was being seen for really nice work and um then I don't know less than a year later I was seen for Casualty um which is a BBC One uh drama that has been running it's it's got like a weird world record it's like the longest running emergency medical drama in the world (laughs) (laughs) it's very specific but still (laughs) um so yeah I, I I was actually seen initially to be a guest artist okay. on the show, so just be in one app, um, a patient in the emergency department, um, and I didn't get it. And but they were like, "We loved her," so I was like, "Okay." And then a couple of months later, and like lots of casting directors right. say that, "Oh, I love them. I'd love to see them again." And you, you kind of just go, yeah. "Okay, great." Like they liked me, maybe one day, but probably less than two months later, I was called in again to go for the role of Phoenicia Catry. Um, who actually at the time had a different name, and I think this is I think this is how casting should be. They hadn't decided the ethnicity until they decided right. they liked me, and they said, "Okay, she's mixed. That's yeah. that's what she's going to be," which is like heaven. And so, it, well, at least then it was so rare. Um, so yeah, then I, it was a whirlwind. They shoot Casualty in Wales, in Cardiff. So they. They travelled me up for a screen test when there were three of us left. Um, and I shot with one of the actors I'd have a storyline with and a director. And although I'd been on sets for like some, some decent things at this point, it would never been like huge. I went to these studios, saw like the hospital, you know, and you walk in and you're like, <laughs> I'm in a hospital, but it's not a hospital. <laughs> and I'd watched some of the series as well yeah. to like understand what I would be in and what style of acting they do and what characters my character would be linked with. I knew there'd be a love triangle and a pregnancy. So, um, so yeah. And I obviously booked the job, which is, which is, yeah, amazing. I worked there for a year and a half and only recently did it come out that I had left and my character, spoiler alert, died, um, which was huge, like Mm. so emotional. And then, uh, and then I think the week the week after I found out I'd been shortlisted at the National Television Awards in the newcomer category. So I was just like, I didn't think anything could get more emotional. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just like, it was amazing. And yeah, I've said to you that my character, Phoenicia, um, inspired me a lot because um, she was an eco-warrior. She was very like brave and bold and uber confident and just like honestly I envied her confidence um but her being rubbed up on me um which I suppose leads yeah. us into our yeah. conversation so, now it's, well, there's so much about the acting I want to pick up on but we, we, as we're here we're gonna we'll talk yeah, we'll talk hey. we'll talk veganism first so the hmm. how did you get from cash character in casualty who's a bit of an eco warrior to this this, this character is having a bit of a an imprint on me to actually i'm going to change the way i've i i i've lived all these years and 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 you know enter into the world of veganism it i mean it came from lots of different directions and i had been veggie at this point for a few years um and it's something that was always in me i think i was like I was always going to be veggie and lead to vegan. I think it was always going to happen in a way because um, I just uh, I couldn't un- I couldn't understand the idea of eating animals when right. I was little. But I was such a fussy child that my parents were like, "No, <laughs> you you don't eat anything other than like chicken nuggets. You you won't eat yeah. if you go veggie." <clears throat> when I was like seven or eight or something. Um, but yeah, so so my character because everything she did was driven by basically saving the world she had a bit of like a superhero complex um and so like on her day off in one of the apps she was at a comic-con event handing out flyers about environmentalism and 
um, I don't know, she was just so strong and so sure mm. in her beliefs um, and her lifestyle. And I agreed, <laughs> but right. I wasn't doing it. You know, it was, it was, it was really weird. It was just, and so I suppose through her, I just became more aware of it and how it wasn't something, you know, the classic, like, oh, vegans always bang on about being vegan. It wasn't like that at all. It was just like, like, she wasn't like that. It was just part of who she was. It was just a fact about her. Um, and I kind of, yeah, like I said, I just agreed. And also like, I know this is completely random. Joaquin Phoenix's Oscar yeah. speech um, massively impacted me, like massively. And normally, I don't know, I, I, I suppose when someone talks about animals, I pay attention. Yeah. So I was going to say normally I wouldn't notice, but if someone's talking about animals, then I'll listen. Um, but yeah, that, like it just, there were so many different things that were coming at me. And the fact that my character was as well, it just, it just made sense. And I couldn't argue it. I couldn't argue why I wasn't, vegan there are so many alternatives mm. so many options and I was just like why am I why am I not doing it and then during lockdown like over a year ago um during the first lockdown I was like I'm just I'm just gonna do it and, I, and same with becoming veggie I sort of cut out first of all I cut out eggs and then it just kind of mm. happened from there I was just I did it slowly but then I feel like sometimes when your mind switches and goes I'm not eating that anymore you just don't yeah. do it anymore you know, like, I think the first meat I cut out was lamb or maybe duck. But after that, it was like, I couldn't, I, I, I even couldn't understand how other people were eating yeah. it. You know, suddenly there's like a switch is turned on in your head and you're just like, I can't do that. And yeah, eggs was the first because it's so like blatant, like you can't ignore what is sat in front of you. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a weird <laughs> like transition um but now I just see how ridiculously easy it is mm. at least for me um to be vegan it just doesn't feel like a thing and funny enough people had already kind of assumed right. I was like I obviously I mean right now I look like a I look like a walking talking <laughs> vegan cliche to be fair I'm even wearing a top that says eat plants which was really leaning into the theme <laughs> um but yeah like I think it was always it was always going to happen. It was inevitable. And all these things came, came at me at once. And it was just like, right, there's no denying it. Why am I, why am I not? It's, it, you know, and then it proved easy. So I was like, all right. <laughs> were were you thing. vegan on the set of, of Casualty? You know, was this a transition that happened, you know, fairly quickly into you discovering your character? Um, it took, it took a while. Uh, not, so I started shooting in like mm. November and then lockdown came in March. So I suppose mm. it wasn't that long. It wasn't that long. Um, but I, but yeah, I'd, I didn't, I hadn't really noticed any vegan options. I was just like, I'm having the veggie option, but hadn't, I don't think I'd connected that the veggie option was vegan. So when I went back, I was like, Oh, I need to let everyone know um, that I'm vegan in case yeah. there's a catering issue on being on location in the middle. Cause as paramedics, we would shoot in the middle of Wales whatever right. hour in the morning like freezing cold that if I needed food there was yeah. nowhere <laughs> so I was very nervous that there wouldn't be any food for me but they I think they were already the veggie stuff was vegan um but yeah so then the remaining year or something I was on the show from there um Did yeah I was vegan and it just made sense it just it fit perfectly there was no and even when I would get emails saying oh Phoenicia needs to eat in this scene or there's going to be food what do you have any dietary requirements and I was like well funny enough both Phoenicia <laughs> and I are vegan so there you go and it just made everything easier did everyone to be think you'd gone uh, you know full uh, like method you know did they did they could, did they think well, well now we can only <laughs> refer to her as Phoenicia on, on set and <laughs> <laughs> thankfully not thankfully not that does that did happen sometimes though and it happened once it was so early in the morning it was like between five and six and I just got out of the car and um, the first thing someone said to me was hi Phoenicia and I was like really I'm not even in the costume yet like come on I'm not working yet uh, but no luckily there was a there was a clear difference at least in my head between the two of us because she was 
bold and strong-headed as anything so yeah we we, we still <laughs> differ in a way. It, it sounds like your experience was fairly positive but you know from 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 thinking back were you know sets co-stars you know people around the the industry if you like were they, they fair i am i'm imagining that, that that sort of creative world would be fairly comfortable and familiar with with vegans i'd imagine there's quite a probably a uh, I'm guessing a disproportionately high number of vegans within the creative industries, but your, was that your feeling, or is is that me uh, perhaps uh, <laughs> imagining it? No, I, I think you're definitely right. If I suppose, and because I went, I was vegan during this time where it was during the height of the first couple of lockdowns um, that. I was only around mm. people at Casualty yeah. um, and my and my family and partner. So to me, I thought I'd slowly go, oh, yeah, because I'm vegan. And people would go, <laughs> oh, me too. And I'd be like, no way. And I didn't know, even though I'd worked there already for a while. Um, and I think I started thinking that that's the kind of, that would be the same percentage of, like, the rest of <laughs> the population. So I suppose, I haven't actually thought about it, but I suppose now that I'm out, and I'm chatting to people, there are a lot less vegans than I kind of thought there were, you know, like statistic, like proportionately, um, because, yeah, there were a lot of people on set that would suddenly go, oh, yeah, me too. And you're like, oh, cool. And they didn't make it a big deal. Um, and, yeah, I'm still finding out now when I'm chatting to people on the phone, like from the show. Um, I'm like, oh, I need to bring something vegan then. And they're like, Why? Someone the other day was like, I'm vegan as hell. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was unaware of this. Please take no offence. Um, but yeah, I think there are, there's definitely a lot more vegans in the creative industries. I don't know why necessarily. It's just, um, yeah, it's the way it is. And But I still get taken the mick out of, obviously, because people love taking the mick out of vegans. And I, I, I understand. <laughs> I think it's very fair. Let them have their, have their fun. Uh, I can understand it's the classic, you know, um, I mean, it's in the name of your podcast, <laughs> but the kind of, how do you know someone's vegan? Because they tell you, and um, it's like, yeah, in case you give me something that's not vegan, well, yeah, you I need to tell do, you. Yeah. I was going to ask you that. You, I mean, you've, you've, already, you've already said, I'm not really sure why. Because uh, as I asked the question, I was like, I wonder why. And the, the only... The only logical conclusion that I can draw, well, you'll you'll be the judge of whether it's logical, but the the only conclusion that I can draw <laughs> is is maybe folks in the sort of acting world have a perhaps a heightened sense of empathy. That that's that's my that, that's my logic for it. Does that hold water? Do you think? Do you think that that is a is a logical conclusion? Uh, absolutely, I definitely do. But you're also talking to someone who has been told. Uh, yeah that I that I suffer with hyper empathy oh. so like I'm going to assume that every actor is the same but no I would say so I would say so and also there's a lot of um it's, a, mm. it's very liberal in the creative um art so I feel like people are open to um I don't know looking into that kind of thing and and lots of people don't necessarily do yeah. it for animals you know they do it for the environment but I think it all aligns in the end um and i think that might be part of it but that's not to say obviously that people who aren't super liberal and like a conservative can't be vegan but i think that could be part of it and yeah definitely the empathy that like yeah and and also i think it's because i know there are some groups who are maybe a bit more judgmental about people being vegan um and i, I don't think it really is it, it's not like mm. that in the creative arts it's just like I, I well to be fair I shouldn't compare to anything else because this is all I know but all I can say is that in my industry it's things are accepted basically you know you feel quite accepted so many actors say they finally feel at home and like understood when they realize what it is they want to do because people just accept you as you are we're all basically a bunch of weirdos who are just like thrown together and finally feel like we fit so I think yeah I feel a lot less kind of judged um, at least on a safe set, something like Casualty, you know, I didn't feel judged at all. So, yeah. could be that. I don't know. Yeah, I just, it's interesting you say that. It just made me think, you know, there, there's probably other industries where. You know, if you if you'd ask me, what's the percentage of I don't know people who work on an oil rig who are who are vegan? I'd probably say I reckon that percentage is quite low, and then 
you know, and and I'm sort of just wondering to myself, well, why why is that? And I, I wonder if uh, compared to the acting community, I wonder if there's a sense of almost the creative arts of of, of sort of almost. For, further along in their sense of being able to throw away the, the 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 you know the stereotypes the the sort of pigeonholes that society puts them in because they have to in order to do their work you know you can't be one type yeah. of, unless you're I don't know John Wayne or whatever you can't be one thing for your acting career uh, no disrespect to John Wayne I'm sure he's a fine actor but you, you get you get my drift uh, you know <laughs> you can't just play one type of character you can't be one person you almost have to embody all these different people and therefore throw away the stereotypes it's just just to i don't know if that made any sense at all but yeah yeah i mean and i i don't know if it kind of links to what you're saying but like a big thing in at least obviously because you're talking about people on set and people entirely in in the industry but in terms of actors um Mm. you have to throw away your ego that is like that's it's essential because if you're going on set being like yeah you know i've got this big fat ego how are you ever gonna be vulnerable and that's what people like to watch is vulnerability you know i don't care about someone who has like it's just one level you know you want the layers um so yeah i think when you kind of at least try to release the ego you can kind of um see what's underneath and you know like hide less so well, it we're just, going deep. <laughs> well, you took it. We well, went deep. Just there, oh. it, just, <laughs> it just sort of fell that way. It just—it got me <laughs> thinking about a previous conversation I'd had with um, Carol Carol J Adams, who's a, a who's an author, feminist author, wrote the sexual politics of meat back in I want to say the early eighties, um, and she talks a lot about you know the uh, the. Uh, the ego, the toxic kind of max- masculinity, the stereotype of that is wrapped mm. up in this sense of meat, you know, that meat eating is what makes you who you are, that defines this kind of like um, strength almost. Right, and it's yeah. all connected with these kind of toxic mm. male, uh, you know, gender roles. And she she then talks about, you know, essentially we we, in order to be, a better society we need to kind of throw these away we need to you know everybody does we need to remove them because they're they're not useful to anybody and in fact they're harmful to Mm. all kinds of different groups and she you know she includes um uh, non-human animals within that too so it's yeah that's 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 why i went down that you know we casualty set to there and it was quite (laughs) It feels quite logical in its own way. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. I just I caught myself there talking about ego and layers, and I was like, whoa, where am I going? Oh, my gosh, I'm going to open my soul up to you. It's a good place to be, I think, 25 <laughs> minutes into a, into a podcast. I think we've, 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 done, we've done pretty well. There you well. go. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, we'll, come back to, um, we'll come back to acting for a bit, and then we'll, we'll, I do want to explore a little bit more about your, your kind of vegan journey. But... Um, the the newcomer thing we talked a little bit about this before we started recording but i i, I do I do want to talk a bit more about it because i you know I, I like i said to you i was i was looking back through your acting credits listening again to you you know saying you know telling the story live and i'm thinking you know all these short films i mean even as it was you know it was a short period of time for you to to tell the story but i don't that is years and years of struggle and 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 work right back to the nativity play i find it almost <laughs> yeah, i find it almost exactly. kind of a, just is is curious in this industry that you that you're in that um sort of almost recognition being seen is the start of the the career in the in the wider world's eyes <laughs> and, and i'm just curious as to how that feels as as somebody who's been through this long painful journey the blood sweat and tears is does it feel like recognition or does it is there almost a bit of like what where were you when when i was when i was really a newcomer <laughs> i totally get what you mean and yeah i've never thought of it that way in terms of yeah being a newcomer to most people but having worked for so many years and don't get me wrong I'm still a lucky one Mm. where it has happened quickly considering the year the decades that it takes uh so many people and even then I don't think 
I, it's a it's a weird thing with acting because it's like 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 what you said it's sort of like you've made it when people kind of know who you are but I feel like yeah we can define our own success and I've always said my success as an actor is if I can actually live yeah. off the money I earn from it and that doesn't have to mean being a regular on a BBC one drama that can mean mm. doing bits here there and everywhere um so I've got off the point um so I don't I don't I, I think it's I don't know. You really, you, you've asked me a question that I just cannot, because I totally get what you mean. Like, it's so bizarre being a newcomer when I've been doing it professionally for however many years. Um, but I also get it. I think when you're an actor, mm. you kind of expect these things. And generally, you'll put your, you'll almost put yourself, not like, well, kind of like yeah. in your place. You'll yeah. be like, whoa, whoa, don't get ahead of yourself, because it's so easy to get lost in all of that. And for me, at least, the main thing is to stay grounded and know that I don't know what's around the corner. You can have a really high high and a really low low, and that is it's a roller coaster of being an actor. So um, I just took it as like amazing. Yeah. I've been nominated for something. I've been acknowledged. Um, I, I like. I, I still feel like I am a newcomer. Like, yeah. but I will always feel like that because there is you're never done learning. I don't think as an actor, you you, you should learn from everyone around you, and that's what I've done on on Casualty. I learned from every guest artist, every regular I worked with. You just can't stop learning because that's the whole, that's the whole point. You're never done. You know, you're yeah. never like, okay, now I'm a good actor or now I'm like the best because you, you, you learn every day and you get better every day because you're learning more about yourself and you're learning more about the perception on through the camera and you know, you're learning about stillness. And I mean, I personally watch a lot of TV, so I'm also learning. But, you know, that's my research. That's my work. Um, so I'm learning while I'm I'm watching. Um, so, yeah, I, w I would definitely think of myself as a newcomer. And But like I said, I think I always <laughs> will, even though it, no matter how many years I work. But I appreciate you, uh, like, thinking about that because it's so true. It's It seems like someone just appears <laughs> and you go like oh they're new oh they're a new face and it's like oh my gosh and it's not just like the years it's the, yeah. it's the minutes every day like it's the waiting for the call from the agent it's like hoping to get an audition it's it's doing an audition and never finding right. out if you got it or not you know you're sat there every second of every day going are they gonna let me know and your agent's going I hope they let you know I want them to let you know but sometimes they just don't and you have to get the message at some point so it's like all those and the rejection, like, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, you have to do it only if you love it. Yeah, there's no that other way to do it. Level of rejection, like, I, I don't know how you, how you come to terms with that. Is it just as a, a civilian, a non, a non acting, a non acting type? <laughs> I've never been in that world where I've been, you know, constantly kind of scrutinized, assessed. You know, and and sometimes you know, I hear, hear stories from from people who've been around that world saying, you know, and you talked about like th things like ethnicity, the look of somebody. You, you can walk in the door and you could be the best actor in the world, but you just don't look right. You're 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 not you're not for this yeah. part. Um, and I loved your your point about it would be amazing if more characters they they could not decide the name, the background, so they could they could let's find the actor and then work that's through it. that that that's an amazing point but but i'm yeah. i'm amazed by the sort of the 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 grit the determination the, the psyche of somebody to who's gone into this world chosen to put themselves in there and has had a thousand no's probably and this one and then the the moment of this one yes the the adulation of the the you know you're nominated for this award how do you kind of square that how does it feel how does how do you create that sense of balance in yourself when you've had to, you know you might be thinking well I've had a thousand people say that I wasn't good enough for this role and I couldn't do this and I didn't get that part or not call me back and then I get this one tremendous yes and then suddenly everybody's like oh yeah you're brilliant it, it's incredible how, how do you how do you feel is there a sense of almost like unwillingness to take the praise because you've you know you're balancing it in your own mind with all the other experiences Well, it's funny what you just said there about the unwillingness to take the praise because, okay. yes, but for different reasons. It's really, really weird culture in acting of, like, you're not allowed to 
be like, yeah, I worked hard for this, right. you know, because you're always looking, hoping someone will give you a yes. When you get a yes, you have to be so like, yeah. I mean, I am grateful. That's the thing. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to act like I'm, I'm, I'm so, I am so grateful, but sometimes you also go, but I really worked for this, you know, I'm so grateful, but I, but I, I earned this. Yeah, um, no, no, so that's sorry that's just off that point that you just said because it's it's true but for different reasons um but what you were saying before um i completely <laughs> forgotten that's right it was <laughs> what you said. it was one of my long, on that. rambling questions <laughs> no, I, I was just talking about how you how you managed to 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 take that that kind of praise, whether you whether you can accept it when you've oh, been through these things before, whether you're almost a bit hardened to, well, yeah. yeah, thanks for the praise, but, you know, you weren't there when, you know, wh where were you all saying yes when I was getting all the no's and the rejection? I think it's everyone takes rejection differently. And as much as I joke about at school and get, getting rejected all the time, it genuinely, like, I'm so thankful because they prepared me for the industry. Because if I'd sailed mm. on through getting every role, um, I would have just thought, well, this is what acting's like. I'll go to drama school and then I'll leave and I'll get a job. Mm. And, you know, a big job and I'll be sorted. But that is not the reality. Um, so I take rejection as, okay, mm. they found someone more suitable. It's like in my head, it's never I wasn't good enough. Right. It's never I shouldn't be an actor, <laughs> um, apart from those like, Every actor has like a monthly <laughs> breakdown. Why am I doing this? Yeah. But we don't choose it. Like it just, you, you get the bug and then you like, have, it's something you have to do. I couldn't live any other lifestyle. Um, but yeah, so I just see it as, and like you said, it can sometimes be you walk in the room and they're already like, ah, oh, she's not what we imagined. Um, and I, I mean, you can, you can get something for being that bit too short, shorter than they imagined or that bit too tall for the role or, you know, your hair isn't this and you're, and mm. obviously the colour of your skin a lot is like this kind of, they want to show diversity almost on a poster. And it's like, I, I also look yeah. different in different lights. Like we all do. Um, and if I don't look dark enough in my self tape or light enough in my self tape, is it going to, are people going to immediately know what I am? Yeah. You know, and that's a big a whole thing of like, there's, we're like racially ambiguous, which, <laughs> I hate that term, but um, that w that happens a lot. Like people being told, like, "Oh, I don't really know where you fit," and um, yeah. So you just you just kind of realise it's it's actually literally not personal. And I understand why people take it so personally mm. because it's you, like you're your product, and then people are saying no. But I know it's not personal. Like there's something in me that's just like, no, it's lit it's nothing to do with me in a way, even though it's completely to do with me. It's nothing to do with me because they found someone who was what they imagined. Maybe they were better. Maybe they were better for that role. Maybe they looked more what they imagined. Maybe, you know, there are so many factors yeah. that I can't beat myself up about it, that it would be absolutely pointless. And I would just hate what I was doing. But when it comes to like the praise, I'm, no, I, I just, I'm just like, <laughs> thanks. Like, it's really nice. And I'm not, I'm not, like, yeah, it's just really lovely. And there are always going to be some people who don't like your style, who do whatever. And, and luckily at Casualty, I've had an amazing reception, especially when they bring this bold character in to have, like, a love storyline <laughs> with these, like, heartthrobs on the show. It's very, like, it's very tense. Um, but I had a great reception, and I'm just, like, embracing it, really. I feel... I mean, now I sound like, I, I do honestly feel so grateful um, for for where I've ended up and we'll see where I end up going. But, um, but yeah, yeah, it's a very complex thing, acting. But it's very, very weird. There's something you said there that, <laughs> so that resonated with me and I'm, I'm, I'd like to get your take on it. You, you talked about... Um, when you when you f feel these kind of rejections, you, you've learned to understand that it's not about you, that it's it's whatever. What there's so many other circumstances at play. The director's choice, mm. the casting mm. agent has already cast the main actor, and the main actor doesn't suit the look of the other three actors, and the, you know whatever they're set on that person. So blah blah blah, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Does that? 
again, I feel like this is probably a deep question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, d- 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 does that? So do, do you find that helps you in your like your day to day life? I mean, I, I personally, this maybe this this isn't. I don't intend this to be a counselling session for me here, but I'm, <laughs> but I I've, I I definitely find <laughs> that I have a probably an an overdeveloped self of res- sense of responsibility. You know, if something goes wrong, I sort of feel like it was probably my fault, even if it's nothing to do with me. It was something to do with the neighbours down the road or whatever. And that can be quite destructive. It can be not very not very helpful for you or your relationships with others. And, I, and I'm just fascinated. The way you describe it, it seems just so, like, pragmatic. So that's how we should all think about life, is actually there's loads of things going on in people's minds. There's lots of reasons why things go wrong. It's not all your fault. That way that that person's feeling sad is probably to do with lots of other things. It's probably not you. All that kind of stuff. Has it? Does it help? <laughs> Has it helped you in like the day to day life, or do you, is it just a very separate? That's my work and that's my life. It literally <laughs> does not help me. <laughs> like, well, maybe it does a bit, but no. I, when it comes to work and me, oh my gosh, worlds apart. Like, yeah, I'm the same as you. That's You're probably why we're vegan, yeah. to be honest, because we feel responsible for the world. Um, yeah. yeah, we we couldn't live with ourselves if we didn't do this. But, um, but I mean, I'm, tr- I'm trying to get there, and I've not actually thought about that part of my career, like how how it links to, yeah, the, the kind of my personality, basically, like being completely opposite. But um, yeah. I think that would be a great... Can you imagine how much simpler life would be? I mean, I do... In a in a way, if it's someone that isn't that close to me, or you know, I have to tell myself, okay, well, it's probably nothing to do with me. And once, actually, a friend said to me because I said I was worried about being on set because as an actor, um, I I just really don't like the idea of yeah. you know some people and some actors like get in the zone um, and they'll sort of someone will come talk to them and they just won't reply because they're like no. Yeah. I I really struggle with that concept. Because I'm like, no, I don't want to reject it. So if that has ever happened where I've had to do a really emotional scene, I'll just kind of yeah. be like, guys, I just need like two minutes. Um, and I was talking to a friend about this and she was like, well, if some, if you think someone's weird on set, she was like, <laughs> they might just have diarrhea. <laughs> and I was like, that's so true. She was like, they might just sit there. They might be just stood there thinking, I need to get to a toilet. I need to get to a toilet. Life advice. And I was like, that is such a good way to think of it. Yeah. Yeah. If someone's being weird, just be like, they, probably, they, might, they might have diarrhea. Like, we don't know what's going on in someone's life. Feels like- I thought that was such a genius piece of advice. And every now and then I would be like, they might have diarrhea. It might be something else, but it might it be diarrhea. Like that should be like, I don't know. That could be like the title of a self-help book or something. <laughs> th- <laughs> if this doesn't work they out might just you, have could, you could easily write that book you know a guide to coping with yeah. modern relationships oh, definitely. they might have diarrhea <laughs> yeah just write it and then just read it all the time it's fascinating though <laughs> it's myself. separate you know it's separate you know in, in, in your mind i sort of i mean uh, I guess it would be it would be pretty amazing if like every actor because of the experiences they'd had with these wonderfully self-adjusted, uh, well-adjusted people and could cope with all sort of rejections in life and all the rest of it. But I guess it wouldn't be logical that that would be the case. Uh, it was, I imagine it's just you, you can develop it in one area of your life and then not in the others, and that's probably perfectly natural and normal. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm working on it. I'll be working on it forever, not worrying. You know, we're all such warriors. Yeah. But at least I've got Talking it in my about, career. Um, at least I want to pick up on something you, you said a, 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 a while back about um, veganism when we were talking about, you know, the acting community and why that there's, we, you know, in our, in, our, in our sort of few experience, et cetera, that we're there, there's, there's more vegans in that world in creative industries and so on and so forth. And, you know, we were talking about um, also connecting it potentially to kind of there's a political element to it as well sort of a you know it's generally perceived as a kind of a a liberal pursuit (laughs) like the um uh you know veganism and so on do do you think there is a a case to be made for almost in our particularly polarized times that that is problematic to the progress of veganism that it is 
viewed in that way and therefore we need to and I'm almost playing devil's advocate in this in this question but and that we almost need to make some sort of shift or at least reach across the the divide to to others you know i think about something that somebody said to me in a podcast once about you know if you if all you ever do is talk to vegans then who are you who are you helping who are you <laughs> what what change are you making so i'd love to yeah. get your view on that No, I completely think that's what we should be doing. I think we sh- it shouldn't be it shouldn't be linked to your kind of political views or, you know, liberal, conservative, whatever. It shouldn't I I don't think it should be where you kind of, you know, lie on that spectrum. Um because yeah, I I like I I they're obviously so closely linked, but yeah. They also have nothing to do with each other. So, I mean, <laughs> apologies, I'm a Gemini, if you couldn't tell. Everything I say is completely conflicting. Um, but yeah, like, at the same time, why do they have to be linked at all? It's what we eat. It's food. It's, it, you know, it, it's food and it's also our world. And I wouldn't, I don't necessarily know that being right wing or something means that you don't mm. care about the environment and you're not trying to change your life in that way, you know. But I think it's just... The attitudes towards it like yeah. I think advertising is starting to help um I think if that was pushed a lot more and even like oh I can't, I'm so bad with names I can't remember the name of the person who wrote it but like oh, dirty man. vegan cookbooks I got Matthew Pritchard? Um, my partner got me for my birthday yeah I think. used to be in um dirty yes. Sanchez which is like yes, a British jackass he's fantastic exactly yeah. exactly and I think yeah, yeah, and I have two of his cookbooks now, and I think that's the kind of, as, along with so many other different kinds mm. of ways that we can brand it, but that's really important, that kind of person just being like, I'm not mm. any different, I just don't eat animals, and I don't eat animal products, and you know, um, yeah, I think it's just, and, and, how, and how we sell it as vegans, because I don't mm. push it with people in my life i don't kind of um go on and on about oh you yeah. really should you really should because then people just pull away they're like well no why you i, I eat what i want to eat but when people come to my house they know they're gonna eat vegan food mm-hmm. and every time they're like this is all vegan this like a barbecue this whole thing is vegan because i know it might be controversial in the mm. vegan world but i love a good meat alternative um and so, you know, Richmond sausage, um, meat-free sausages on the Barbie are so good. Um, so, yeah, I'll, like, put out that spread for friends and they cannot tell the difference. It, and it, it, I think that's the kind of way, you know, get people started through meat alternatives, definitely, especially, like, people who just say, oh, I couldn't go without meat. At least yeah. you, you feel like you're eating meat sometimes. Um, well, although I did have a, a fake chicken nugget <laughs> that was a bit too chickeny and i was like ah this it just felt really weird um but and obviously i I drink coco ko ko um milk i have that in on my cereal which i don't see the difference between cow's milk and that and then in my like hot chocolates i'll have like oatly um and that it's nicer and now my brother doesn't have um like cow's milk anymore he he that's the same as me and especially mm. I don't drink coffee but he loves it in yeah. coffee like the is it the barista one um and I know people say when they have that they don't add sugar to their coffee and stuff and I think if it's kind of yeah just sold in a very casual way you realize that mo- well I've my experience yeah. is that people don't push away from it so much they don't like rebel because they kind of go like oh can I have a try oh it's nice oh maybe I'll do that once a week and I'm like you should yeah it's good and like <laughs> healthy and whatever and then suddenly they're doing it and yeah I just think the way like there shouldn't we need to try and not have judgment around it um around what people do because that's the way that we can make a change really if they want to obviously <laughs> god it's, I sound like I'm like trying to get I them to you, a vegan cult but you know like con- converting that's, everyone that's part of the um, part of the uh the <laughs> mo I think that is that we that we sound a bit like a vegan cult sometimes. That's that's fine. I think it's perfectly natural and normal. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> as someone who um you know, I hope so. relatively <laughs> new to to veganism but has got at this point a fairly already a pretty pragmatic view about how you bring people along you know you've got to you've got to meet people where they are and, and bring them into the world was that was that always the case or when you first got into the into the world and you you know you had a bit of phoenicia about you maybe and you're quite headstrong was did 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 you find yourself i call it the um the new vampire sort of syndrome in twilight you know where the, they have to be kept away from everybody because they're a bit too vampire um for for everybody um did you find yourself having a bit of uh, some of those moments where you where you felt like you wanted to sort of you know slap the uh the the uh, the meat out of somebody's hand and so on and 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 give somebody a little shake to to get them to stop. Oh, definitely. I know exactly what you mean. It's I know it's like to someone who hasn't gone through it. That sounds so weird. And now I'm always <laughs> going to think of myself as a vampire. This is just bizarre. But um, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I actually had a call after the first lockdown. We went back to shooting um, when we we're in Wales, and I called a co-star who had also gone vegan during the same time as me, like I think a month or two later. And she was like, have you seen Dominion and, and you know, the documentary? And she was like, I will never go back to eating meat. And I was like, oh, was it really bad? And she was like, Liv, I can't even. And she kind of explained. And I was like, I said, I will never eat meat again. So you don't need to, because she went, they had the same kind of like no meat and then was like, okay, no dairy, no animal products. Um, and yeah, I, I, I was like, I never will. I do it because of the animals. She was like, oh, then do not watch it. But I recommended it to family. And um, my mum, I think, had just gone veggie. So she was like, I'm not doing this. But my partner had watched some of it. And um, apologies <laughs> to if they will watch it, watch this conversation. But I called this co-star and I was like, I don't know what to do because I don't want to be that person. But the fact that my partner mm. eats meat although doesn't cook with it and doesn't have it at home, but we'll have it when we go out to restaurants. I was like, I don't <laughs> understand how they can do this. Um, and the coast, I was like, look, you just got to, just got to leave them to it. Just leave them to it. But this, to be fair, was the only, the one time that happened. And I was just really like, how can I be okay with someone who just doesn't, I mean, yeah. Well, well, who can still eat an animal? Like to me, I'm just like that's so so weird. And I, they like he already has um, vegan butter and vegan <laughs> milk, and but he loves a good egg, you know. But it's mainly yeah. the meat because for me it was a transition. So I try and kind of get people give up meat and then go from there. Um, but you know, now I'm kind of like he does what he does, and that is totally his prerogative. He's also German. Um, and I would never ask him to give up German sausages. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's just, I did have a moment, <laughs> but now I've come back down and this was like, God, yeah, a year ago or something. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's nothing to do with me. It's nothing to do with me. He makes mm. a huge effort. Um, and not because of me, he did that anyway. He actually introduced me to some of the alternate milk alternatives, um, so yeah, I just realised it's totally up to him, and he's open and he doesn't take the mick and make me feel, I don't know, like doesn't go oh the vegan thing. Stop talking about vegans. You know, he he enjoys it as well. He's an amazing cook, so yeah. it's always nice when I'm like, oh, how could we make like for for my birthday? Um, he was like, what? I'll bake you something. I was like, okay, great. He's like, what do you want? Because I'd normally have pavlova. That was like mm. what I always loved, which is obviously just egg whites to the max. Um, and I was like, if there was any way to figure out vegan tiramisu. And he was like, okay. So he went <laughs> off, found a recipe. I don't even know. He was at his flat, did whatever he did, and turned up with a vegan tiramisu. And I was like, this is amazing. But yeah, so he, it's not like he's yeah. one of those people who's very like, oh, no, I never would. It's just that on the kind of special occasions that he'll go out to a restaurant or get takeaway, then he'll get what he wants and, you know, he should is yeah <laughs> and i i've learned to mind my own business <laughs> well that's pretty not, pragmatic not of you. The, i mean I, 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 i'm four, four and a half years in and still i'm not i'm not capable of that level of pragmatism <laughs> <laughs> I, I really i particularly struggle with um <laughs> when friends and family are talking about things like climate change and and or or they're talking you know a recent one is uh in the for, for folks in the uk is um 
I think it's an is it is it the, uh, the there's an alpaca that has tested positive for TB. This has been all over the news, um, and like people are in outcry because this uh, the uh, the alpaca is uh, essentially that they're gonna they're gonna kill this uh, this alpaca because it's got TB, and essentially this is like a threat to. Uh, it's like the that's the, the the kind of the rules if you like from I don't know who it is Defra or whoever the the rule is that if an animal's got this then they need to be they need to be killed because of the risk to cattle and ba- basically the risk to profit and it's it's really interesting seeing like mainstream omnivorous folks like up in arms about this sort of thing and yet you know actively paying for other animals to be killed on a daily basis i i, I do struggle with that that sort of that that kind right. of that kind of concept still even though you're, you're absolutely right people are just they're in different stages of their journey like i know like intellectually i know that to be the case but yeah i, I there's the, the the logical inconsistency i just find really difficult to to let go of you know, I don't know, is that something it's just me? Perhaps I need to be yeah. a bit more, uh, yeah, I get you. a bit more mature about these things. I don't know. No, I totally get you. I, yeah, it, it, and it gets frustrating at times. I suppose, like, I know lab I shouldn't grown, be hoping for what's meat, it called, yeah. like lab, um, where they're going to make, <clears throat> yeah. I know so many people who was kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When that comes out, I'll definitely do that. And I'm just like, okay, people, people will do yeah. what they want when they want to. And I've realised badgering, uh, yeah, yeah, at least from my experience, badgering someone only makes them pull away more and be more stubborn about it. Um, and yeah, I like also the fact that my partner still eats meat and you know will eat eggs yeah, and stuff. True. That doesn't mean that'll happen forever. <laughs> And like, if, if he now watches, <laughs> I'm not expecting anything. <laughs> do what you want to do. But, you know, yeah. I, I, I used to eat steaks. Like, that is bizarre. Mm, or, yeah, it's true. But, you know, I changed and now I'm the complete opposite side. So it can happen and hopefully will. And more people are, <laughs> I think mean, it feels weird saying like being converted, but it almost is like every day. Um, people are going vegan or, or cutting down on milk and eggs and honey and all the all the products that yeah. you know vegans don't eat. So I'm hoping it will it will filter down and hopefully new, new generations um, will kind of yeah pick up our mm. slag. <laughs> Essentially, I mean that's kind of what's happening, isn't it? Um, but yeah. yeah, I just well, and, and you are absolutely right want to, that. Basically. We all, you know, there's very few of us who were born vegan. There's very few of us who haven't done some of the things that we criticise others for. And there is a, there, there is a, you know, those without exactly, sin cast yeah. the first stone sort of, you know, <laughs> that I think you have to remember that kind of, uh, that kind of mindset, I think. And it, uh, it is difficult when you've, when you've seen something that you so strongly and, and virulently believe in uh it's very it's very difficult to to remember that but it is so it is so essential you're absolutely right and i think not doing that will probably alienate more than it than it wins uh in terms of hearts and minds so yeah i, I again i think my my counseling session yeah. is uh has, has advanced on you should you should definitely consider a career in this uh olivia absolutely <laughs> 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 well, well i did used well, to want to go, go into, into counseling so there we go fallback plan you've got, the book, you've got the book planned you yeah you, you they could just have diarrhea that's that's coming yes. out uh in in 22 exactly. potentially uh and the, and the counseling okay. career so i think we're all sort we've got all, ba- all the bases covered <laughs> <laughs> Bef- <laughs> yeah i'll oh, be you, fine you whatever happens will. i never get an accident again i'm good that. i'm you'll, good you'll, you'll be fine uh, for for um just for <laughs> for for my understanding so when's the nta awards um and and how are these things how are these things decided can we have an influence can we can we <laughs> can we make sure so... that you win this because you should you, you you 
all are the influence. This mm. is such a rare award ceremony where it is a public vote. So normally it would be a panel of however many hundreds who are members of the BAFTAs or whatever. Um, they will watch everything and vote. Um, but this is basically a free for all. So initially, when I was long listed in June, the NTA, I don't know, panel had selected me. So that was out of anyone else's control. Then the vote opened in June and I got shortlisted and now the vote is open again. The awards are on the 9th um, of September, which are going to be mm. on TV live, I think on like ITV. Um, and the voting doesn't right. close until I think the ceremony itself. So like the evening of the 9th and it literally takes a minute. It's just on the national television awards um, website and a big old button that says vote now. And uh, as you have uh, said, I'm in the newcomer category, which is like towards the end. But on the on the journey, you can vote for other favourite actors and shows. There will and absolutely sorts. be a link so, to yeah, that in the show notes. Like um, and we're, we're, I would I would implore everybody oh, listening to this or watching you. it or however you are consuming this uh, this particular podcast to uh, to vote for Olivia. Um, not just because she's vegan, but also because she's an incredible actor. No, so, um, and, and it's going to go far. <laughs> I'm sure we will see a Joaquin Phoenix-esque speech when you win as well. So, <laughs> oh, man. oh, I would be sobbing if I was yeah, talking about fit, that stuff. Fit, Honestly, play. I would not be composed like he was. Yeah, fair play. <laughs> Even the yeah, picture of a cute incre- animal makes me cry. To, to be able to to articulate things like that in that with in that stage and just amazing but um yeah i i, I thoroughly uh, recommend everybody doing that so uh let's hope they all do uh that the the web address do you know it off the top of your head um i think it's just www.do that um, national that's the one or choose a search engine and type in NTA awards and vote then and I'm sure now. you will find it best newcomer category <laughs> yes, you are you in full photo. the full paramedic gear <laughs> in in my exactly and my uh, character is very <laughs> like very very <laughs> sassy so I look very like in the photo um so you amazing. may not recognize amazing. me but, but well, it is look, me it's it been incredible me. having a chat with you olivia and a counseling session and all the rest of it i thank you so much you can drop the invoice to me uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> i shall i uh, hope i haven't rambled too much my gosh i uh you get me started on it's acting and some food. Some great subjects to chat through, so, yeah. so, <laughs> thank you so much we and we, we, hopefully we'll, we'll speak to you on the other side when you've won Okay. Not at all. Thank you. <laughs> oh, don't, don't tempt me. Thanks so much. <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.